Welcome, everybody. You are currently sitting in Cracking the Player Code. So if you aren't supposed to be in this session, this is your time. <laughs> All right? Ah. <laughs> Rob, I need you to stay. <laughs> so I'm Sam Huff Schleter. Um, I, you can call me Sam. Or, sorry, I'm Samantha Huff Schleter. You can call me Sam. Um, I work at, as a senior manager at a firm called Ruben Brown. So just in case you were scrolling through the bios and looking at all the speakers, I'm going to ask the burning, or I'm going to answer a lot of the burning questions you probably have right now. Yes, I am a CPA. Yes, I am busy right now. No, you do not want me to do your taxes, but I can find somebody who can. And last but certainly not least, I am not your atypical accountant. Otherwise, I would not be sitting up here. So enough about me. We're going to turn it over to our panel. So I've had the joy and the privilege to talk to each of these individuals. So I'm super excited about what they have to share with you today. I think we have a great panel discussion um, that really brings everything full circle from kind of how do you gather this data all the way into how do you manage the data to how do you use the data? And then also how do you use that data and how, how that impacts responsible gaming as well? So as we go through this session, I'm going to allow each of the individuals to kind of explain, um, you know, where they, where they work at, um, kind of what they do, and then also ask them a few questions along the way. Okay? Awesome. All right, you guys ready? So we're going to start with, right now, um, emerging trends in data analytics. Okay? What are, what are these guys seeing? What are they working with every day? Okay? So, Rob, I'm going to kick it off to you first. So if you want to talk about yourself, just tell everybody where you work, where you're from, and then share your thoughts around data analytics, or data specifically. How do we gather the data? What are, what are the tools and techniques to do that? Super. So I'm Rob. I'm Chief Revenue Officer of Extreme Push. As you can guess, I'm Irish uh, from that. So flew in this morning, so, or yesterday, so a little jet lagged. Uh, for those just around Extreme Push, we're a CRM and loyalty marketing uh, platform specifically focused in the iGaming sector, letting companies leverage real-time data, AI, gamification with the ultimate aim of driving and converting visitors into loyal customers uh, from that side. We work with circa about 200, 250 brands. Uh, we're headquartered in Dublin, Ireland. We have offices in the UK. We have offices in New York. And just as of this week, we opened up an office in Latam in Rio. Uh, so, that's, so it's a, a busy time. Part of it from a, a data perspective is how we look at it or what's our perspective on it is, first of all, you've got to have a data objective or strategy or focus. No matter what it is, you've got to have one in place, first of all. And for us, when we talk about data, it's always permission-based. It's like zero-party, first-party data. And it's essential to have a view, and it's that permission-based side of it. And it will feed into later bits around the responsible gambling, that side of it. But when we look at it, it's about sort of having a clear understanding engine that goes from gathering the data, because what we've seen is there's so many silos in where people store, how they gather data, but also in the structure. So if I look at it in, in EMEA, it's far more normal to see acquisition and retention teams work together with the same data, whereas in the US now it's changing over the last few months, but it's getting it to build what we would call, first of all, a single customer uh, view. So that's have a centralized view about your customer. And once you have that, it's about taking the decisioning, understanding the proper segmentation and personalization, because it's, it's got to be every comms has got to be relevant to that individual. So we'll take that, we'll communicate it out. And for us, it's super important that it's all in real time. And, and that's one of our sort of key differentiators around it. It's in, if you're in the middle of a game, and you see whatever sort of a touchdown or that, it's getting the odds, the bets around what's the chances of a second or a third and feeding that in. So when we look at it holistically, it's about ingesting the data, it's about building it up into single customer view, and then communicating it out and having a two-way flow around it. And just one example of it is, so at the recent uh, Super Bowl, so we did a game for uh, FanDuel around the, the kick for Gronk at, at uh, halftime, so essentially, we built a gamification game where people had to guess, would he get the kick, would he not? Once that happened in real time and he missed, the percentage of people, so 30% of people said he would miss, we already were able to communicate in real time 
with a relevant bonus and offering to those people based in categories where they are VIP, where they what uh, just a, a part time, and getting the relevant bets out to them, and then bringing it in for re, uh, real time. So for us, it's the full flow around the data, but having a clear understanding, focus, and strategy. Perfect. Thank you, Rob. All right. So kind of the next life cycle in that, after you gather the data, right? You got to you got to figure out how to sort it, what to do with it, how to process it, right? So chosen, can you speak a little bit to that? What what's some trends that you're seeing? What's some tools or uses that that you're seeing um, from your perspective? Yeah, my name is um. Can everybody hear me? My name is Chosen Blakeman, the founder of Ferro Analytics. We are a data intelligence company that specializes in service and AI. Some of the trends that we see in this space is consumers want to be more empowered with their decisions. People want to make better informed decisions. We see a series of tools and assistance that are going to be launched in different sectors to help further that innovation. From a business aspect, we're looking at a data migration. Now businesses want to control their IP and leverage it in different ways. So we see a lot more businesses encompassing their data for external use. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So once Absolutely. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gil Bushkin, and I'm heading marketing. There is a huge echo. I'm heading marketing um, for Vet Parks. Um, heading marketing means that I oversee CRM growth, social media, and marketing operations together with my great team. That part of them are here today. Um, when it comes to data and how we use that, all of these pillars that I just mentioned, the one common common ground between them is that we activate on data for each one of the pillars of the business. The reason is that, um, you know, a wise man once said to me that we as a regional um, business of bed parks, we try to punch above our weight class, right? We are trying to compete with the big operators in this space, and we try to run an efficient, healthy business. How do we do that? We do it by applying data and learning from data, learning from machine learning, learning from AI, and automation in every vertical of our business, whether it means that we will start, stop, and adjust acquisition based on data, whether it means that we will um, funnel customer to one on another um, player journey, user journey, based on the player level, based on the player um, bonus reinvestment, based on the life cycle of a player, based on the activity level of a player, based on the game of a player. Everything needs to be done by data. Um, so, and, and same true for social media and how we acquire customers and how we present things to our customers and what we are essentially amplifying through social media so customer coming back to our platform to play our games. Everything is decided by data and everything, um, as Rob mentioned, is funneled in hopefully nearly real time by our ops team. Um, the, the name of the game is essentially tailoring the offer and the experience to the customer in real near, near time. And this is why we are so heavily related on, and thank you, relying on um, tools as Rob chosen and I'm sure that Paolo will speak about soon. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And then kind of the next stage right, after we use it in the operation, this whole idea of responsible gaming. How does that play into marketing? How does that play into effective use of this data and gathering this information? So, Paula, I'm going to pass it to you to kind of talk about that aspect um, and how you can use, how you're seeing trends in the market right now related to using player data um, in regard to responsible gaming. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. So hi everybody, my name is Paula Murphy, um, I'm Business Development Manager at Mindway AI and we are basically a specialised technology business who track 
the player database and track behavior patterns that we see within the player database looking for signs of problematic play. So our customer is typically the operator and we're looking at the spin level data so that's sort of every 10 minutes for casino play, every betting slip by betting slip for, for sports betting, looking for signs of potential risk, right? So what we actually do is we train the algorithm to replicate expert human decision making. So we get psychologists basically to, to rate the data and then the algorithm replicates that on scale. So what you then end up with is a really solid risk profile of every single player on your database. So what I'm interested in from the marketing perspective is how that risk profile interacts with the segmentation that we would see when we're, we're looking at marketing to, to our customers, either for retention or actually acquisition into new products. Um, with the view to maybe excluding certain customers from certain products. Um, and I think one of the main drivers for, for the interest in this from our perspective is one of our big customers who is a big UK operator actually said to me at the start of the conversation with them that they have a situation at the moment where marketing is on or off because of this risk profile. Whereas if you start to understand the intricacies of that risk profile, you can get to yourself to a situation where you can say, okay, it's safe to, I don't know, serve a sports betting product to this customer but it isn't safe to serve them a high volatility casino game. And it's about that intelligence and understanding of the age of your customers, the gender of your customers, the interest of your customers, the location of your customers, all the stuff we need to know from a marketing perspective, but then layering on top, what are we seeing in terms of behavioral patterns from them? And what level of risk does this customer pose to us as a business? And also, we obviously want to protect them as a player themselves. We want to keep them gambling sustainably, basically. Right. Right. I think that makes a lot of sense, too, and that's, that's kind of the... How do you gain that market share? How do you target the individual that you want to target, right? Um, and so you really activate your marketing strategies and, and your responsibilities to target the individual that you want to target. And then also you have to factor in the side that you have all these players, you have all this information and all this data. How can you help assist them in, in making positive choices, right? How can you modify your AI? How can you modify your model? Your model? I just love everything that you guys have brought to the table so far. So kind of transitioning into what is this? Can you all hear me in the back? Um, so yeah, so kind of the next the next step is, you know, what, what do you see over the next five to 10 years? Where do you see this information going? Um, you know, I, I was, I listened to a panel earlier, right? And we have this widespread of people that are using AI, they're using machine learning, and there's some folks that aren't. Um, and so ultimately there's a lot, there's a learning curve in that. And again, where, where do you see this going in five to 10 years? So Chosen, can you just kick us off with that? Sure. Um, we're building an algorithm called Atom. And Atom empowers you to make optimized decisions in your everyday life. We see this integration being across different sectors, health, wellness, traffic, diet. If you want to include more reading into your schedule, we can create you a customized plan to induce that. If you wanted to add more yoga to your morning routine, we can create a wellness schedule that takes all your information and gives you a customized report. That's what data is moving towards. We can get to a society more like the Jetsons and not like the Handmaid's Tale that we're, that we're headed to in the current moment. Perfect. I love that idea of, you know, incorporating those cartoons into your, like, 
that'll never happen. The Jetsons, who, what? Anyway, so love that. All right, Gil, where do you see AI, machine learning, automation? How does that play into the operations? How does that, how does that enhance, um, you know, what you do on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, so I can think of several um, several areas that um, the AI will will kick in. So right now we are in a kind of um, situation that we are operating in the bird's eye view, right? We are operating from above. We are trying to funnel customer on a high level or a higher level. I do think that we will start to see more and more micro segments that are really tailored made to the specific cohort of a customer. Nowadays, if I'm operating and I'm trying to work with a segment, if a segment doesn't have some statistical value, some essentially weight, I will essentially combine one segment with another just not to deal with this tiny segment. I do believe that in the next um, iteration of this industry, what we will see, we will see more automation of the AI deeply integrate with the communication tools, whether it's external or internal, of the platform, deeply integrated with the bonus tool of the operators, and as a result, it will allow us operators to actually create smaller segments that are more impact for us. So this is one thing that I can think of. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we are talking about a customer or a user that will be required to play more. It can be exactly, to Paula's example, it can be definitely something that we identify in real time because there is all of this integration with the communication tool, tools of responsible gaming. And we will identify a, pa- a pattern that a customer that is fairly new is betting too fast or too high, and for that reason, we will prompt a message. So we will essentially give a safer experience to our customers And by doing so, we believe that we will also create more enjoyable experience to our customers because we don't, um, as I always say in in our internal discussions, we don't want to burn the customer too fast. We want to create an experience that will be meaningful and encourage customers to come back and use our product again and again. I believe with the integration of data to communication channel, overlaying it with real timing, we will be in that position. Perfect. I love that analogy of, you know, we don't we don't want to get married too soon, right? We want to make sure we take our time. Um, we, you know, spend our time, build our time, build the relationship, um, and hopefully that's a long term commitment at the end. Absolutely. So love that. All right, Rob. What do you see? What do you see in the next five to ten years? I think I'd see a marriage proposal uh, on the panel, but uh, no. The way we look at it from a sort of is. Qu- slightly different than others around the whole AI. So we've gone with a view of giving full transparency because a lot of what was there before was confusion of what AI is, how it does. And if you go back years ago to advertising of Google search and this black box and it came it out. So what we do is give, and I go full transparency so people can actually see the modeling, the data inputs, the views on that. We segregate it into two perspectives of a, a plug and play that people can fully utilize and get an understanding and set up in minutes and they can see it, but it's tailored for them as opposed to an industry. So, and that could be the likes of a sort of predictability of churn, early churn within 30 days and have the steps and the real-time campaigns following it out from that view and that side of it. Or else, and that's sort of for people who utilize it like CRM or marketing. But then we'll go into a, a deeper uh, AI, which is focused around data analysts and that who have a much better understanding and can personalize and drive it forward much more for themselves from that side. So it's a view we've gone, and back to the point of around the whole responsible gambling, it's, it's the proactivity is super important, that it's, it's not reactive, oh, oh, there is a problem. It's understanding the trends, the behaviors, the relevancies. And for example, like if someone is betting too much, whatever their criteria is, we can show them a game which is free to play without betting, and, and it's to, to give an experience but fully adhering to the responsible gambling side of things. And again, it goes back to within real time and having the ability to predict it. So when we look at it from an AI perspective, that's where it's really helpful to get based on actual behaviors, betting patterns, and understanding it for each operator as opposed to the industry. And that's how we look at it. Yeah, I think sometimes in our 
in our world, right? That transparency aspect is is very, very important. It's important to our players. It's important to our regulators. It's important to, to our individual um, employees, right? Understanding, having that knowledge, having that understanding. So I like that idea of the, the full transparency of being able to see things, see patterns, and, and maybe head them off um, before they're a problem. So... Perfect. Last but certainly not least, Paula, where do you see us in five to ten years? Okay, so I, I want to pick up on this idea of the future, right? Because I think this is super important in terms of what we're talking about here. And I think what we have to consider is our customer of the future. That is Gen Z, right? And Gen Z care about the businesses that they spend their money with caring about them. And they care about social responsibility. So... I want to link that in with brand loyalty that spans even beyond Gen Z. And the idea that actually as the US market matures, brand loyalty is going to become more and more important in terms of acquisition of customer as well as retention of customer. And in terms of giving operators that step above other operators, those that care about their customers, that serve them the personalized experience that that all of my colleagues on the panel here have been talking about today, and that look after what they're doing. They're the ones that are going to thrive and succeed. And I think in terms of what role does the AI play in that, you just can't do this without the technology. You need the technology to do the heavy lifting and to provide the analytics that we as humans, the human in the loop, right, are then able to look at and make assessments and work out actually what is best to serve to which players. But you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it on that scale when you're servicing millions of players. You know, I I heard somebody on a podcast the other day saying that he believed the potential sports betting market in the U.S. in states that are legal at the moment is somewhere around 90 million customers. Now, as more people get involved with sports betting and that market becomes a realization, how on earth would you track that manually? It's just not possible. And that's where the tech comes in. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, A, I wanted to thank all of you. It has been an absolute pleasure working with you guys over the last month or so to to prepare. Um, And if we could just give you guys a round of applause. (laughs) So, um, we're actually pretty close, so I don't know if you guys have any final thoughts, um, if you guys have any questions in the audience, if you wanted to ask anything from our panel. Nobody has any questions? We were really clear, right? That's why that is. I mean, I'm just saying, like, honestly, I can't, again, I can't thank you guys enough. So, um, with that being said, we'll let you all get to it. I believe there's networking after this. So, um, we'll be around and appreciate your time today. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks, guys.